A triumphant victory in an MMA bout is a pretty spectacular thing to witness. To see the genuine reaction of a fighter who put in all that hard work and was under all that pressure and still came out on top, seeing that relief wash over them and that joy, the celebration with their team who sweat and bled with them preparing for this one night, it's such a feel-good moment unless it gets soured by a winner who decides to make things ugly. Today's list is all about winning fighters deciding to forego a classy and humble exchange with their opponent for getting in a few more licks against their bitter rival. I'm Tommy from MMA On Point, and these are the 10 most disrespectful post-fight celebrations in MMA history. Hey! Number 10. John Jones versus Daniel Cormier. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but John Jones and Daniel Cormier don't like each other very much. In the lead up to their long awaited first encounter at UFC 182, there was the infamous Hot Mike ESPN incident that really illustrated the dynamic between the two light heavyweight stars. Hey, Pussy, are you still there? I'm here. And of course, the press conference brawl. <laughs> This was some of the baddest blood the sport had ever seen, and so it was not too surprising that some disrespect occurred following the bout. While technically the disrespect started before the bout even ended, with Jones having decisively won four rounds of five, there was no illusions about who was getting their hand raised following the final horn, and in the waning seconds of the bout, as DC tried for a single leg, John threw his hands up in triumph to taunt his opponent. He basically just stopped fighting. That was until Cormier disengaged, and the champ threw some last second shots, which DC attempted to counter, nearly taking off poor Herb Dean's head after the fight had ended. In a last bit of animosity, JBJ reached back to the WWF Attitude Era to throw a cross-armed crotch chop in DC's direction. If you didn't grow up in the 90s, that meant suck it. A classy way to end a classy chapter in their feud. Number 9. BJ Penn vs. Sean Shirk It's one of the most iconic images in the sport's history, certainly the most in the career of BJ Penn, the licking of the blood off the gloves post-fight. He did it notably following bloody victories over Joe Stevenson and Diego Sanchez, but what's a baby J to do when they want to taste the blood of their fallen foe, but their gloves are relatively clean? Such was the dilemma facing the lightweight champion after he defeated Sean Shirk at UFC 84. There was no love lost between the two fighters. Penn famously declared Shirk dead post-vacant title victory over Stevenson at UFC 84. 80. Sean Shark, you're dead! A belt that was held by Sean until he was stripped for a failed post-fight drug test. BJ would put Shirk away with an awesome flying knee and some punches on the ground for good measure. When the referee pulled Penn away, he decided to stay and chat a bit, something out of the norm for his post-fight celebrations up to that point. After the taunting was complete, BJ went for his signature glove lick, but realized he was missing the main ingredient. No worries, Shirk is still on the ground being tended to by the medical team. I'll just run over there and swipe some blood off his forehead to lick up. With all the accusations Penn made about Shirk using performance enhancers prior to the bout, maybe not the best time to ingest some of his bodily fluids. Number 8. Michael Venom Page vs. Cyborg Santos Is it more disrespectful to plan your celebration before you even have the fight? I, I called my mother yesterday already and I said I won. It's one thing to decide in the moment you're going to do a flip off your opponent's unconscious body, but to be so sure of victory as to prepare your taunt beforehand? It just feels like a slap right in the face. But Michael Venom Page's whole game is kind of built on that disrespect. Whether he's as dismissive of his opponents as he appears to be during his fights, or if it's simply a way to get them off their game is anybody's guess, but his post-fight celebrations have definitely earned him a spot on our list. After defeating David Rickles at Bellator 200, MVP donned a massive infinity gauntlet to get his hand raised. Not sure what the message is there, considering you have to be wearing the gauntlet to harness the power of the gems, and he clearly was not during the fight. But okay, cool pop culture reference. And far more famously, after literally caving in Cyborg Santos' skull, in the second round of their bout at Bellator 158, Paige put on a Pokemon trainer's cap and then rolled a Pokeball in the direction of Santos, who was being attended to by the medical staff before striking a victory pose. Now, did he know that he he had crushed the guy's skull? No. But maybe that's why you don't roll Pokeballs at people you just violently need in the face. I know it's risky, but it's my only hope, so I choose you! Evangelista Cyborg Dos Santos! Number 7. Israel Adesanya vs. Paulo Costa Through a series of devastating leg kicks, Israel Adesanya completely shut down Paulo Costa at UFC 253 in arguably his greatest performance before finishing off what was believed to be his biggest test at the time in a nearly flawless victory TKO four minutes into the second round. That wasn't enough humiliation for Izzy, though. This was a heated rivalry. Tons of talk beforehand. <laughs> so as Jason Herzog was pulling the champion away from his latest victory, he, well, he humped Costa a few times on the way up, rode him, 
Nothing completely demoralizing about that after the first loss of your professional career. Next, Stylebender would say something about wrapping his dick around his waist to use as a black belt, a reference to Costa presenting him with a white belt during weigh-ins, followed by some sick breakdancing. That wasn't the end of things, though. The champ approached Costa's coach, Eric Abahasin, and it's not clear what was said entirely, but after the captain can be heard telling Izzy, we're still coming for your ass, Adesanya replies, you try, I'm come, I love you. as he does a gesture simulating such. Luckily, that was the last bit of disrespect respect, he even shook Paulo's hand before the decision was read. This entry is going to get our channel kicked off YouTube, isn't it? Number 6. Brock Lesnar vs. Frank Mir 2 Brock Lesnar was truly thrown to the wolves when he entered the UFC in February of 2008. Yes, his background in collegiate wrestling was top tier, but he entered the promotion with just a single pro fight against a former champion in Frank Mir at UFC 81. Despite that massive disadvantage, Lesnar was dominating the majority of the 90-second bout, but his inexperience would cost him when Mir was able to secure a desperation knee bar and score the victory. A year and a half later, the perfect storm would form for the two to meet up again. Lesnar now the heavyweight champion, Mir holding interim gold. It was the main event of the biggest card in the promotion's history up to that point, UFC 100. If you know anything about Brock Lesnar, he's not a big fan of people in general, so the extra high profile of the event, in addition to Mir talking all kinds of shit for over a year between their bouts, had the Beast Incarnate pretty fired up come fight night. Upon smashing Frank's face and making him look like a kid with a tree nut allergy that just ate a bag of almonds, Lesnar wasn't done. First he would ponder who's the fucking man, then Brock got back in a confused Mir's face to point at him and say, talk all the shit you want now, fucker. Lesnar then let the fans know they were number one, before explaining to Joe Rogan, Frank Mir had a horseshoe up his ass. I pulled that son of a bitch out and I beat him over the head with it. I don't think these two will be sending each other Christmas cards anytime soon. Number 5. Jorge Masvidal vs. Ben Askren Oftentimes, after a particularly devastating knockout, fans are shown the humanity of fighters, either through displays of respect or true concern by the victors. After all, this is a sport at the end of the day, and nobody wants anybody to get hurt. Except, sometimes fighters don't seem to care at all that they may have done some serious harm. An early notable example would be after Tank Abbott KO'd John Matua in his debut at UFC 6. While his opponent lay in the fencing response position, that's when the arms stiffen up and jut out after a KO, Tank did a little mock fencing response response of his own after telling Matua to get up. Yeah, he can't hear you, Slick. But with all due respect to Dave, Jorge Masvidal's mocking of Ben Askren following his record-setting all-time great and absolutely brutal flying knee KO at UFC 239 takes the disrespectful cake. After hammering in a few extra shots on the ground that Jorge later deemed super necessary, Gamebred got in Ben's unconscious face, slapping the mat, saying, talk that shit now. Again, they can't hear you, guys. Masvidal wasn't done, though. After some pretty standard post-fight celebrating, he then proceeded to mock Stiffen up and flop like a fish onto the mat, mimicking his fallen foe. Calling him a bum in his post-fight interview was just the icing on the fuck you cake Jorge served up that night. Number 4. Shinya Aoki vs. Mizuto Hirota Flipping the bird is a pretty regular part of the MMA world these days. Nick and Nate Diaz practically have their hands in that position at all times. And while their early shenanigans, like Nick flipping off a group of heckling fans following his victory over Cyborg Santos, was the talk of the town that night, since then that type of behavior would be but a footnote. Possibly the most bizarre usage of the bird, however, came from Shinya Aoki following a victory over Mizuto Hirota in a super fight at the Dynamite 2009 New Year's Eve show. He told MMA Junkie that some kind of outside force overtook him at the end of the fight. That force would result in a nasty hammerlock that broke Hirota's arm, who, in Aoki's defense, should have tapped far before it ever got to that point. The break was obvious to everyone, but that didn't stop Shinya from giving his injured foe the finger right to his face. This was followed up by an airplane dance, some flipping off of the crowd, and then sprinting out of the arena because fuck it. Aoki would lose a coaching job at his gym and be publicly reprimanded for the incident, and he would apologize shortly thereafter, but a year later he said he didn't in any way regret his actions. Which is probably why he basically did the same thing in 2014, after defeating Yuki Yamamoto with a sick twister before taunting him, taunting the crowd, and then backpedaling out of the arena middle fingers in the air. The Diaz's would be proud and have made a similar exit themselves. Number 3. Michael Bisping vs. Luke Rockhold 2 it was one of the all-time great UFC title fight upsets. Michael Bisping, a late replacement, a quote-unquote gatekeeper, on 17 days' notice, hops off a movie set and KOs the middleweight champion Luke Rockhold in the first round in the main event of UFC 199. Truly one of the most incredible moments in the sport's history. Things got disrespectful fast, though. At least nobody spit in anyone's face this time. By the way, that moment after the Jorge Rivera fight didn't make our list, because it wasn't so much a moment of celebration as it was some really bad blood that boiled over, much like Habib hopping the cage at UFC 
229. By his own admission, Rockhold underestimated Bisping because of their previous bout at UFC Sydney, and the Count came into the fight with a chip on his shoulder. Following the KO, Michael hopped up on the cage, looked back at Luke and screamed, fuck you. Mid-celebration, he would point and laugh at Rockhold, ask him if he knew where he was, and tell the camera that was the easiest fight of his life. Bisping told Rogan he wanted to be an asshole in the moment, but refrained. He would get his chance at the post-fight presser a few beers in. I am the champion of the world, people. Sitting right beside Rockhold, this press conference is a reminder as to why they do individual interviews now instead of sitting all the fighters together on stage. From the time he arrived until the time he left, Bisping was in rare form and absolutely buried Rockhold any time he spoke up. Hey. You got knocked out, buddy. Sit down, shut you got up. got lucky. Real lucky. Bisping. First round, buddy. Sadly, there would never be a trilogy because the buildup would have been something. Number two, Tito Ortiz versus Guy Mesker two. The Huntington Beach bad boy didn't get his nickname by giving out handshakes and lollipops after his victories. The guy's signature taunt is literally digging a grave for the person he just beat, throwing their imaginary body in it, and covering them back up with the dirt. Oh, and the gun fingers. Can't forget the gun fingers. And while Ortiz has built a brand on being a bit of a dick, his first real displays of such behavior is what lands him on our list today. Tito lost in the finals of the UFC 13 tournament to the Lion's Den's Guy Mesker, a bout that was controversial to say the least, and a sour point for the debuting fighter. After beating up one of Guy's teammates, Jerry Bolander, at UFC 18, and donning a shirt afterwards bragging about sodomy, Ortiz would get his chance to avenge the loss to Mesker the very next event, and he did exactly that. The future champion took it to the Lion's Den fighter, and following a TKO stoppage, made sure a bitter rivalry would be brewing between him and the team. After Tito hit the classic gun fingers, he skipped the burial and went right to flipping off Ken Shamrock and the rest of the Lion's Den. Then, because the t-shirt gimmick was such a hit the first time, he threw on a Gay Mesker is my bitch shirt. Tito would never get his comeuppance, at least not from the lion's den, but they would have beef from that moment on. Number 1. Enzo Gracie vs. Ben Spikers There's no rule that says you can't irritate your opponent before a fight in mixed martial arts, but maybe pissing off someone you'll be locked in a cage with where they can legally hurt you isn't the best idea. According to Legend and several now-defunct MMA websites of yesteryear, Ben Spikers, Enzo Gracie's first round opponent at the 1995 World Combat Championship Tournament and a former Olympic judoka, was a bit of a prankster, a bit of a kidder, and spent the days leading up to the tournament prank calling Enzo's hotel room all night long, as well as taunting him and making fun of him during media events, apparently telling the legendary Gracie he had eyes like his girlfriend. Weird flex, but all right. All the tomfoolery would come back to bite Spikers as Henzo would make pretty quick work of him in their bout. After some absolutely brutal elbows to the back of the head, Gracie would force him to tap with a gi choke. Henzo kicked at his fallen foe immediately upon releasing the choke a bit late, and then stepped on his neck after getting up. Not exactly the most sportsmanlike MMA celebration. It's okay though, he half-ass shook his nearly unconscious hand afterwards. This would be Spiker's last attempt at MMA, and after that, I don't blame him. He would be arrested on his way back to the Netherlands for getting into it with a flight attendant. Some tough times for Ben Spikers. A big, big thank you to Ben Rosette, who provided that sweet tune you heard in the intro. Check out his music by clicking the link in the description, and go give him a follow on his Instagram and Twitter page, at Ben Rosette. Huge shout out to the legendary once and future King Tomas Welsh for editing this video together. Follow him on Instagram at Big Beat Visual. That's beat as in the band from Doug and not a forceful strike. Thanks for watching. Please give us a like and subscribe. We've got three new videos or more for you every single week. Let us know what you thought of the video in the comments below. Follow On Point MMA on Twitter and have yourself a wonderful day.